All right, welcome everyone. Just give it a few minutes for let everyone to join. Thank you for taking your time joining this exciting webinar. Learn more about the recent updates. All right, you got people joining from all over the world here. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, so everyone's joined here. I'll introduce myself. My name is John Green. I'm the customer success manager at Eon Reality. And I have my colleague, Jamie Justice. Hi, everyone. I'm Jamie Justice. I'm director of education US and global innovation here at Eon Reality. Excellent. Well, we've got an exciting webinar for you today. We have some new tools, new features that we want to share with you. Uh, make sure you're aware of uh, all the, the latest upgrades and what you can do with, with your Eon platform. And specifically, we'll be focusing on the, the merged XR features and a lot of exciting <laughs> tools that can apply to your different areas that you work with. And uh, Jamie, what do you think about these new updates? It's really exciting. I mean, the, the, the future is getting brighter every day as I see the capabilities of what we can do with this platform and how it can enhance and improve the teaching and learning process specifically to career and technical education or TBET or other related types of programs. So, yeah, what we're going to show today, I think, opens a whole new dimension with merged XR uh, capabilities and 3D records and assessments that we couldn't do in the past, but we're ready to be able to go forward with from today. Yeah, and what's great here, we're, we're going to demo you quickly two different ways uh, to use the merged XR tool, which allows you to, to bring in either custom content uh, off a scan or use content that you already work with, a normal 3D model that's already in the platform. So we're going to show you the two different ways you can utilize merged XR. Um, and specifically, from, the, from next, I'll be showing you how to go from scanning an object and how to bring that into the platform and begin working and creating content on a scanned object. Uh, and then we'll show you on a, on a single mesh object, how can we do a 3D assessment tool? So that's another tool that you can utilize, um, re do your recording and have other learners try to copy your steps. So those are some exciting tools, as well as an integration with Sketchfab. So we'll be talking about that integration, how you can find additional models in Sketchfab, and then highlighting some of the, the new reporting tools uh, that will allow you to track track your usage uh, in much more better in a, in a better way so with that it looks like we have a lot of people on here that's great um let's go ahead and kick it off so i will share my screen and first item that i want to show you is how to use the the merged xr tool off a scan so let me go ahead and share my screen and uh, let's walk you through this process now we use a third-party app called scaniverse there are many apps that can scan uh, environments and areas around you. We recommend Scaniverse. There are other ones that also work. Um, so here I'm logged into my application. And for you to start scanning, you do need a tablet or a phone with LiDAR technology. And LiDAR is going to allow you to, to access uh, the camera and begin scanning. So let me walk you through. These are some previous scans I've done. However, I have an object right in front of me. And I'm going to come in here into Scaniverse. I'm going to click on Create Scan. And as you can see here, I have this microphone right in front of me. And all I have to do is tap on that red button. Okay, so I'm just quickly walk, moving around the object, capturing that scan. Now, what you see in red in that background, that's what the camera is not getting. But it's getting uh, this other object here is and move this around. So it just says a demo purposes. I'll, I'll stop at that. I'm just getting that this front surface. Then I'll hit stop right here. You can see it does capture your environment around you, but you'll be able to edit, crop, adjust, uh, adjust the lighting. So you can, there are some editing tools in here that you'll be able to use before you import this directly into Eon. As you can see here, it goes right through that, that import process in the lower right hand of the screen, it'll get up to 100%. Then I'll be able to remove the any excess area that I do not want to use for my, my model. So as this uh, completes the process, this will take me right into this object. And you do have a couple different options in terms of processing. If you want more detail, if you're doing a larger object, 
Um, so right here below here, you'll have several tools you can work with, such as cropping. So let's say I want to remove all that section. I just want to focus in here on that particular item that I'm looking at and I can do that. So at the very top of the screen, you're going to see this top left. So I can move it to the left. I can see the front. Okay. I'm going to focus just on that object. And on the right hand side, if I want to remove any excess surface area, there's my, my object that I want to focus on. And as we're going to see shortly, it doesn't have to be just perfect because um, I'm going to show you the, the alignment phase where I can align it to the real world object. And then all I have to do is hit save. And then lower right hand corner of the screen, I'm going to tap on there and you're going to see export model. You tap on export model. And that will, um, we do recommend GLB as the preferred file type. Um, we do, Eon is able to work with many different file types. If they do see GLB, uh, that's the one we, we like to use. And then as you can see, the app will automatically pop up. Now you do need to be logged in with your login credentials into the app. Once I click on there, I'm going to type in Mike. This is a G track. And I'll do upload. So that will automatically upload, connect to the Eon app. So right there, now I'm in the import asset section of my um, Eon XR. And you can see it already up uploaded. Now I'll set my thumbnail. Once I set my thumbnail, it's going to upload. And now I can make any adjustments right there. I'll take a snapshot. I'll update my thumbnail. So you can see some of the latest upgrades. We've really enhanced the, the speed of the upload and just the ease of use, how quickly we're able to get uh, models in here. And uh, there's my scan. And then from right there, I can immediately start creating my lesson. So you can see it automatically connects to the lesson setup page. And now I can come in here, I can assign categories, which these categories can be adjusted by the institution to get the, the correct category in there. We can see even set levels. These could be grades, they could be advanced, uh, easy. It could be areas, uh, different departments within the your academic institution. Now we're gonna come in here and I will place the object in AR mode. And there's my digital twin side by side, the real object. Um, so now we can do this alignment phase. I can align that, that, that digital twin on top of the real object. Then I do so by clicking on the upper right hand corner. I have this alignment tool. Now this is going to give me three dots, three points of references that I can start tagging different objects. My digital twin, I'll tag it on here. So I'll tag there. Now when I align, it doesn't have to be just perfectly aligned, so a little bit off, but you can see it's on right on top of the real world object. And now upper right hand corner, I can go and hide the model. And now this is going to allow me to start building my content and tools right on top of the real object. Now I'm going to talk about some of the latest updates that we've done in this process. So lower right hand corner, I can access the merged XR tools. And from right there, I can begin tagging this object. So I've set my annotation. Now, Mike, so this picks up, this either picks up the mic or I can use a keyboard now. I don't have to speak into the microphone, so you do have to, I'll redo that. So I can switch to keyboard. So I can, I'll switch to the keyboard. Nope, we do that. So you do have those two options. Microphone, and that even picks up the language that I'm currently using. So now I picked up that keyword, and now I can browse text, image, text. I can do images. I can bring in video content, uh, and simply start tagging this content. Even if I had a PDF document, I could upload in, in that section. Now I can move this around this panel around you know now with the new update i can make adjustments i can take the little dot i can place it in a different area i can edit even within my panel so i can remove certain activities i can come back and add new activities i can toggle back and forth between new activities i bought seven cheap microphones and i'm going to try it i can play that back and even on the lower right hand corner we have this carousel which i can open that up and close those uh 
those uh, the tools. So these are some of the tools you have with the with the merged XR feature and some of the latest updates. Uh, I can also do uh, what we call here. You know, take this. I do that. Lower right hand corner. I can do this AI search. Microphone. Now I can take a picture, a snapshot of that. And this will give me a much more precise search so I can find exactly what I'm looking at. If I'm not aware of the, imagine I could be a factory floor, I could look at this equipment, not be familiar with it, but take use this AI search component, which we're using Bing technology to take a snapshot and get much more of a precise, refined search showing exactly what I'm looking for. And this will, these keywords will take me back to the knowledge portal um, where I can begin looking at this in much more of a precise way and exact showing exactly what I'm looking at. So here, uh, so I can add additional content videos. And as I build my, my knowledge portal right in there, so that's another tool. And of course we always can do the 3d recording lower right hand corner. I can record myself speaking about that microphone, walk around, walk and talk, and then hold it there. And then I could play this back either as, as an avatar, if it's set one-to-one -one scale or as a regular free recording tool. So those are some of the tools going from the merged XR, um, scanning, bring that into the platform. Uh, in, and then what you can do is select uh, your lesson and then align that to the real object. Now, before I hand it off to you, Jamie, I'll link show you one other tool on a regular object. So we did it on a scan. So here I just selected this jet engine and move this over here. And now with merged XR, this immediately goes to AR mode. Um, so if you do have that merged XR, once you log into a lesson, you'll be placed in that AR mode. And as you can see, I can begin the merged XR tools. I don't have to do that alignment phase if I'm not working off a, a scanned object. I can just take my regular object and come in here to the lower right hand corner and begin building my assessment tools this way, jet engine. Again, I can remove that. I can type in my keyword now. And then go through my annotation panels that way. Also, um, I could scale this one to one, even within the, the application. So once I, I can adjust, I can set the one to one scale um, that will allow me to do a, a recording tool. Uh, also, if I come back into the, the mode modality right here, I can go to quiz. Now we have a new quiz feature as well, where you can input the answer and you can choose if you want a single answer or a multiple choice answer. So those are some of the features there we, we've upgraded and enhanced. You can have that selection, that option right there. I come back into that AR modality. Uh, so in terms of one-to-one -one scale, uh, we also have, let me log right into the application and I can set it one-to-one -one on my iPad or I can come into the desktop and also set that as a one-to-one -one scale. Uh, and this will allow me to scale that object to however big I want it, how close am I to that object, how farther away am I, um, what's the size of that object. And this will really help out with the three with the 3D recording once that avatar appears, how large is that object. And here and here, really quickly, you can see that where it's currently located. So by default, it's showing here. Well, I can take the my point of view and I can slide this out. I can take the object and I can scale this to size, make it much bigger and make that adjustment. So I'll, I'll be able to, to see that in AR mode. So those are some of the, the tools and features there um, that, that we have on a on an object and take Merge XR tools on that object or on a scanned model. Now, what I'd like to show next is the the three D assessment feature, and <clears throat> my colleague Jamie he'll he'll show you how we can take a scanned object, which you, we call it a single mesh because we're not able to take apart, but we're able to create a three D assessment on a single mesh object, which uh, I think opens up a lot of possibilities in here in, in terms of the, the digital twin models that you you bring into the platform. So we need to move to that, John. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I'll share my screen here. And what John just shared with you is, is really uh, 
quite exciting to me from the context of, of teaching and learning because we can actually uh, expose students to more and more assets just from one image that you scan. They can go to searches online and where they find uh, videos and a, a large number of videos on a particular topic while they do some research. I guess the main point I want to make is that the benefit of this and the way that you use it, imagine giving students your, your iPad, having them go off as, as an assignment where they find a real world object, they scan it as John shared with you earlier, and then they build a lesson around that and then share that back with their colleagues. I and mean, it's a, a threefold reinforcement of learning just from the mashup of experiences. And through all that research, they now see more and more things than they would typically. And I'll, I'll maybe come back to that in just a moment. So as John mentioned on a single mesh, and I'm here in a small office, but I went out to my shop uh, and, and I have a woodworking shop and I have my table saw and I've now placed a table saw here in my room. Now this is a scan and ideally as John would had shared with you, I would probably underlay this on top of the real world item, but I'm going to build a 3D assessment. And so here I am, I'm in the model, I'm in a one-to-one -one mode. So I've set it to actual size. That's real size from when I'm standing and working at my machine maybe a little smaller, but you can also play with that scale and make something that's really small, very large, so you can access it easier and, and use it and access it. Or you can make it a normal size, or you can make it a little smaller if you need to in certain cases. So that one-to-one -one scaling gives you a lot of power to work with the models that you scan. But again, this image that you see here, I went out to my wood shop, I scanned this, and I want to build a 3D assessment now on this flat image. And to do that, I'll hit the 3D record button here at the bottom, and it's going to begin recording as soon as I touch this button. And I'm going to identify parts in a sequence. So the first part that we want to take a look at is the uh, crosscut blade. This tool here is the miter gauge. It's used for crosscutting. This is a throat plate that's used for dado cuts. This is the blade wrench. On pieces less than four inches wide, you need to use a push stick. And lastly, for ripping parallel to the grain, you're going to use the rip fence. And that created my 3D assessment. Now, another new feature here inside of the platform, and this again is on this flat mesh, is I no longer have to log out and log back in. I can actually go into view and play mode. And so now it will reload it. And so instead of being in the build template, we're now in play mode. I'll set that to one-to-one, -one, and we can take a look here at my assignment. And uh, as a another quick tip, if you want to move this around, all you do is hold the little finger icon here at the side, move that up out of the way. And now I'm going to click on this playback. Here's the demonstration. So the first part that we want to take a look at is the uh, cross -cut You can blade. see that I have an avatar, tool here, but I'm in a small the space. Miter gauge to use for cross-cutting. This is a throw plate that's used for dado cuts. This is the blade wrench. On pieces less than four inches wide, you need to use a push stick. And lastly, for ripping parallel to the grain, you're going to use the rip pins. All right, so now that was the demonstration piece. Now you notice when I'm in one-to-one -one mode and I, you know, when I do the scaling, I will appear as an avatar pointing this out. So you have instructor leadership going with it. All right, so now we're going to go back and play this as a student by clicking on this side. And now I have to repeat those steps correctly. And again, this is on a single mesh. So the first step that I needed to identify was the, uh, the cross-cut blade. Secondly, I looked at the miter gauge. Third, I looked at the blade wrench. Fourth, I looked at the throw plate. And the last one here, in the last two, I looked at the push stick. And then I looked at the rip fence. And I think I have all those answers right. So I'm going to check that off and we'll say, whoops, no, I missed one. I missed a sequence on the throw plate. So you can see that I can get immediate results that show that I have 83% completion rate, 16% uh, incorrect steps. So I, I know what I missed and I can go back now and, and redo the lesson once again and take that as, as another uh, part of the process. So not only can you build a 
3D assessment on a 3D object, you can also now with this new release in Merged XR do this on a flat mesh at, uh, asset that you scanned using Scanniverse, as John shared with you earlier. So let me go another direction here and, and just show you another context of this. And again, out in my shop, wood shop, just to kind of recap the process. The first step is that you scan that image. And so in this case, I was scanning in. Let me take this to full screen also so you can see actually what I want you to see. And I'm doing the same thing that John did with using Scanniverse and this same iPad that I was sharing with you a moment ago. And I scanned in my woodworking joiner. And then I cleaned up all the excess stuff in my messy shop. And I cleaned up the scene and I got it narrowed down to where I wanted it to be. And, and now I'm exporting that scan as a GLB file directly into the XR platform for Merged XR. And I created this lesson on uh, joiners. And so I'm, I'm using this for my own snapshot. And again, it's, it's, it doesn't matter that it's uh, uh, melted looking or, or whatever. And now I'm creating my digital twin and I'm right sizing that to the real jointer. And I'm setting that scale now for one to one. And now I'm doing the alignment process where I'm picking three points and I'm aligning this object. As John shared with you before, I'm choosing my third asset point and now I've locked the model and I've confirmed it. And now the digital is overlaid on the reel, but now I've placed that digital asset underneath the reel. And using those same tools that John shared with you earlier, I'm able to do AI scans of this image and I can find information on joiners. And what I've been, what I found that I was able to do by doing this is that I didn't just teach parts and nomenclature about joiners. I was able to quickly find lessons and content related to maintenance of joiners. So it could be my own lessons. It could be other lessons, but in that process, I was able to create a whole unique set of, of learning experiences that I probably hadn't thought about just, you know, in the first building. So doing this search and you can see all the types of files that you can find, I was able to create a rather uh, in-depth and engaging uh, lesson process. Uh, so now I've started creating these annotation points and I'm now doing this 3D recording that I just shared with you a few moments ago, same process. I've created my knowledge portals, and now I'm going to do that through recording, but now let's look at it through the student eyes in this particular version. Uh, and this is on the last release, but uh, the student would then maybe, in this case, align this on the real world object and doing the same process, and now they're doing the lesson, and so our knowledge portals open up. So in our knowledge portals, uh, we have the ability to do the videos, bring those up to full screen, we have images, and as I mentioned before, you know, you can see now that I'm getting a more in-depth piece of instruction. And so the importance is not just that you have a scan or a image, but we now have this whole learning experience built around that object, that scanned object, or that even that uh, uh, object that you download from Sketchfab or other tools, as we're going to share with you in just a moment. So it opens the learning experience in, in a very broad way and gives students access to lots of, of information that they can then, you know, re, reconstitute in, in a variety of learning experiences and ways. And so you can see we're going fully into tear down and take down of a joiner now, not just parts. So we've expanded beyond what that model is. And then lastly, we can come out to the 3D assessment as I just shared with you. And now the instructor is doing the walkthrough, doing the demonstration, and this is done with within the uh, uh, all within the 3D recording aspect of the program. So one thing I wanted to show you really quickly, because when I made this video, that was pretty the new uh, asset. So let me exit out of here. And I want to go back to my reflector at my moment here, if I could. And let's put this table saw back out here. And let's take a look at what those annotations look like. Earlier today, I took the liberty of making a, uh, a, an, a, a annotation, I'm sorry, uh, for, uh, and I just closed it, uh, for all the objects that you see here. So let me close this out and get that to go. Come on, my fingers don't want to work. There we go. All right, so I created annotations that are to each part of the platform with with a knowledge portal. And I think I just accidentally deleted that because I'm in a, in, no, I'm going to go back to here. I was in build mode. So let me go back into build mode and reset this one more time. And uh, what I want to do is I want to show you this knowledge portal here. And so I can take a look at this particular portal. I can expand that out. 
And as you saw before, just off that same scan, I was able to go out to a 3D Hi, my video. Name is Thomas, and you're watching Casual DIY Channel. So I'm learning about you know, different things on, on the table saw that I created earlier. I'm looking at miter gauges. And, you know, in this particular case, I can look at all the different types of miter gauges instead of just the one that I shared with them earlier. We're, again, taking that lesson out and expanding it a little further. Uh, I can do uh, web searches on, on imagery. About the, In this particular case, I uploaded a PDF file, and I just used one, one that I had available on both types. So you can go all different directions with this particular object, and this was the web search piece here on this end. Uh, but we can go with all particular types of objects and expand on the knowledge and by adding those knowledge portals, all of that here within this same experience, either on a scan or an existing 3D asset. So I wanted to bring those points in and we'll exit from there and come back and talk about uh, uh, Sketchfab integration. And I'll turn it back over to you, John, and uh, look at how you can use Sketchfab to bring other assets into the application. And then I want to share with you maybe a, a simple tip or trick that I found for adjusting Sketchfab models a little bit if they're not exactly what you want. So, John, I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Thanks, Jamie. And it's, as you were showing that, I just thought how much learning can take place uh, from the student point of view as well. As you said, you you learn so much through that creation process, bringing in videos, analyzing content, so the ability to put this in the learner's hands and have learners create content, assign it back to the instructor. I think those are really good tools there to, to explore content. Just as a compare, as a contrast tool, you showed me how to do a 3D assessment on a single mesh. But you also have that ability to do a 3D assessment on a on an object, on a 3D model that comes apart. So I'll just do a really quick demo and then we'll jump right into Sketchfab. Also highlighting a, a new feature here, upper right hand corner, um, uh, you'll be able to uh, do a screen recording. There's that screen record. Uh, so that, that's a, a feature you have available. And so come right in there, we put this model down. And I can open up my my lesson assessment panel. So here I'm on a regular object. Now we do have this identify assessment. So if we tap on identify, there's a new feature in here where you'll be able to identify the object by pressing start. As you can see, we have the I can speak into the microphone as it's capturing my voice right now. I can use the panel and it captures the the language, what language has been set on that lower right hand corner. Uh, and now the, feet, the the part that I'm supposed to identify is highlighted in blue and the remain all the other parts are transparent and they're not transparent mode, making it easy to know okay which parts am I being asked to identify in this section. So I'll put in oh I think I missed my timer here, but these are the spark plugs. Try again. I'll put spark plugs. And spelling does count. So let's see if I get this right. Hmm. Oh, I think I missed that one. But th this is the, the new feature where the the part you're asking me to identify will will highlight uh, in that area. So let me back out of here. Spark plugs. Oh, must be misspelled incorrectly. So let me come back in there and go right back. And then I'll highlight the 3D assessment mode. So this is where the regular 3D assessment on Please an object. follow the following steps. Number one, remove the cover. Okay. Number two, remove camshaft. Number three, remove the cylinder head. And lastly, remove the exhaust manifold. Now I'm, I'm just following the steps here. Manifold. Take the cylinder head. Let me make one mistake. Back and add the camshaft. And lastly, add the cover. And also, I'm able to get this report. So just as a comparison to showing you, we can do this on a single mesh. And then, you, as usual, you can do this on, a, on an object that comes apart uh, in different sections. And I get a report on how well I did. Uh, any mistakes I did will be highlighted in this report. So that, that's a, an option there on the 3D assessment. Mm -hmm. 
Now, talking about Sketchfab, now we do have this integration with Sketchfab, Sketchfab now. It's on my tablet, on my phone. I'm able to access Sketchfab tools. I also can import on the desktop through the Sketchfab application. So if I come back in here, I'm, I'm in my, my app on my phone or tablet, lower right-hand corner, I go to Create. If in Create, now you're going to see that third button appear. I can either import a 3D asset, I can import a 360 image, or I can link into the Sketchfab portal. Now, Sketchfab, what we've done, we've taken all the free assets from Sketchfab, and they're now accessible through Eon. Uh, so if I type in a keyword here, I'm going to say medical. I do have this search function. And now I can look at assets related to that keyword um, as I scroll down here. So this just opens up a lot more options. Uh, you can look at the library that you have. You can import your own models, but then use this as a resource to search for additional models. And here I can see I have a, a low poly medical room. Once you select your, your asset, there will be a little description below. You can see further information about that object. And even in this preview mode, I'm able to preview that model, rotate this around and see, okay, what this model, what would this look like once I do the download mode? Um, so once I have that model, I can go ahead to import asset. This will go into my conversion dashboard. You can see the previous models I imported. There was my microphone below there. So this will go through this progression bar. And once that it hits 100%, I'll be able to set the thumbnail. I did that previously below here. That's the same asset. So let me jump to set thumbnail. And now what I do, I'll just take a snapshot of that model, the position and how I want that shown. Take a snapshot, update my thumbnail. And now I can move to create lesson. See, this puts you right into that creation process. I have my medical room. Can assign my category as usual i'll assign a grade level and then open this up and now i have a, a brand new object i just imported from sketchfab place that down there um, so right there i can also I, I can make some adjustments lower right hand corner i can go to settings i can adjust the shadows as well move that there and make any sort of adjustments we can also toggle between edit mode and view mode. You saw the upper right hand corner. There's this, the, all the options, the very bottom. I can start building content in my lesson and I can go right into view mode. This makes it really nice once you're creating content, editing, you don't have to log out, log back in as an editor or as a viewer. You can just toggle back and forth between edit and view mode. So that's a new, a new uh, feature we added. Also, when you import models from Sketchfab or from outside sources, typically it comes with a lot of annotations tagged to that model. Mm -hmm. So if I come in here and see all the annotations, you can see those are a lot of annotations that I would have to go one by one and delete and start building my own annotations. But so we've added a new feature, upper right hand corner. Now we have the option to delete all annotations at once. So I come up here, there's that delete all annotations. And now I have the option to delete just the current level or delete all annotations. So now they're all removed and that allows me to start building my own annotations uh, in, in building out that way. So uh, that's a, another feature um, here on, I can come into touch mode as well and go to AR mode. Let me put this on the ground here. Now I can scale this up to size. Now all of a sudden my environment just turned into this medical room. Also, I can set the scale one-to-one. -one. I showed you on that jet engine how it can move that around on the desktop, but on the actual app, I'm able to come and set that one-to-one -one scale. So you can see that one-to-one -one scale appeared. So now if I place it down here, just tap on that one-to-one, -one, automatically I'm in this environment I can start building, tagging. I do have the merged XR tools below there where I can start adding annotations. I can take a snapshot do the AI search. I can do a 3D, a 3D recording of myself talking about this environment. So that's on Sketchfab integration with your, your phone. Let me move over to the desktop and just show you the same process where you can find the, the Sketchfab integration. So if I come in, into the, just to the right of the create button, you can see that grid. If I go into import 3D assets 
And here is that area. So if you are creating your own models, you can drag your models in and just highlighting some of the, all the, the, the formats that we're compatible with. So if you are working with your own custom models, these are the formats and we do recommend that GLB, GLTF type. If you do see that, uh, that model type, and I can come in here, right? To get free 3D assets. So if I click on there, going to get free assets. This will place me right into that page of Sketchfab that includes free 3D assets. In Sketchfab, you have the option to create your user profile in here or just use the, the free 3D models uh, in this section. Uh, and here, for example, we'll click on this Nissan vehicle. And once I click on there, I will be able to see if it's downloadable. That means I'm able to download. It's free. Click on download. And here's that file format that we do recommend, the GLTF. And I'll have to simply click download. And that will download it as a file type. And then once I come back in there, all I have to do is take that file type, drag it into that area, place it down, click next. Now the, the GLTF, what's great about this, GLTF can read subfolders. So it takes all these folders and you can take them and it converts them to GLB. Uh, now I can set a category and we even have a tool here where we can credit the author. So who designed this? Who was the, the artist that created this, this model? I can credit the author's name. We'll show up in additional information about that one asset. Um, so I'll just put here under a category. This will go through the import process. And it's the same process. Once I import this in, I'll set my thumbnail. Um, I'll be able to set the size, scale it one to one, prepare that model. And what's great about this, you will be able to share this within your institution. Once you find a model and think it's probably relevant for other departments, you can set this model as public or as viewable uh, within your institution. So anyone will be able to find that model. Here and click on view asset. I can go to my one-to-one -one scale. I can scale this up and this will show me where am I located in relation to that model. Looks like here I'm right next to that object so I can make my necessary adjustments to see how I want that object. I can scale this to a different size and I can save my settings. And now I can create my lesson. It's already in here. Here's that new link. The language popped up here to see what language it's set currently set at. So once I start using those merged XR tools and I speak into the microphone, that language is already preset. If I want to change the language, I can go into the, my settings area in the upper right hand corner. Uh, and go into manage my account to change the language or change the voice recognition tool. Now I can go to build and there's my model that we just imported from Sketchfab. So uh, either on a phone or a tablet, you can bring in models from Sketchfab either on, on the desktop as well. And you'll have all of those features just like I showed you on the desktop upper right hand corner. I can delete my annotations and begin building, see how this comes apart begin that building process as well. Um, also, if I hover, take this apart, if I hover my mouse over these buttons, now the definition will appear. You know, what, what is this button? Toggle the display for annotations. So now we can hover over different tools within the platform that will show that single that one sentence description of what, it, what that does. So that's a new, new feature as well. So those are the, that's the Sketchfab process and, and grabbing custom models, bring them into the platform in addition to the library that you already have, the assets area. If I come into my workspace, my asset that I just imported is right there. So there's the, the Nissan that we imported. There's that uh, medical room from my iPad. And here I have the option to publish that. You can see I set that as a one-to-one -one scale, that icon showing right there. Once I build lessons and add content to that asset, it will move over into the lesson area. And from here, you have the option to share that, make it public, share with specific people. I can create a QR code uh, in, in this section as well. Open this up, share that link. You can create a QR code, download this, put this on a pamphlet, put into my learning management system. So many ways to share these experiences, but uh, I think this is a really, really exciting tool here in terms of uh, bringing in Sketchfab, opens up so many possibilities and options. And Jamie, how do you see the, the Sketchfab yeah. integration from, from your end? 
So, yeah, I mean, it, it opens up a lot of doors. And I, I thought I would go ahead and, and share with you a couple of other points with that. One being that uh, our director for customer success, Rena Walsinger, who's on the call with us. Hey, Rena. Uh, has put together a list. She's done some research of different categories. And we are sharing this document to help you find content in Sketchfab. Uh, so she's just done just a random search just to help find some things that might be relevant uh, by categories and groupings. And so this will be in the resources section of the platform. Uh, and another thing that I wanted to say about Sketchfab is it, it does open a whole other door of, of content creation to you as far as assets are concerned. And I wanted to share with you a tip or trick, I guess. This was some learning that I did early on. Uh, and in this particular model that I created, you know, I have a plane that I, that I got out of Sketchfab. And when I originally downloaded this file, it had a, a big plane underneath. And that just really didn't didn't work for me uh, as far as what I wanted to be able to see and do. And also, if you notice that the grouping is 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 large, so it breaks open to a lot of different ways. And as John mentioned, all the annotations when I built this one in the older version, I had to delete all the old annotations manually, whereas now, as John shared, I could I can go back into when you know, I'm in a build mode and delete all of those at once. So I did a little research and I found a tool that you can use. It's a free app. It's it's a 3D builder by Microsoft, and you can get it out of their store. And so I'm going to open this plane and from work that I had originally. And what I'm going to do is I wanted to show you that. Some things you can do now, intellectual property wise, we're not to change any of the models, you know, in any way, but but how the models are shown are what we can fix here. And to give you an example, there was one really large model that I tried to pull in from Sketchfab once that didn't work. And all I did was open it inside of this platform and it, it ran a fix. It repaired some unidentified links that were in the model for me automatically. And then I was able to export it as that GLB file format as John had shared with you before. So what I want to share with you now is just taking this tool, which is a WebGL type of, of application, so I can move this, this plane around and, and do things with it. And what I'd like to do is I want to group certain parts. So I'm going to now take the plane iron cover or the plane iron itself, the, the, the lever cap, uh, the, the tilt mechanism, all the component parts that make up, get the right angle here on it, and I'm going to make a group. And if I can grab that correct one here, I'm trying to get two. All right, turn the angle a little bit differently. I want to turn that one off and I will turn this one on. It should be able to go as a part. All right, so now I'm able to group all those pieces together and move this down. And now I can create a new group so that when I take it apart, all of those parts will be in a group. And then I can subtitle those later if I want to. All right, now I can turn that off. I can make, maybe make a group of all the wood components and I can drag those out in a different direction, and I can make that a group. And then I can look more closely here at the tilt or the depth adjustment mechanism, and let me uh, turn this group off. And now I can begin taking all those little pieces and parts here that I'd really rather have as, as a complete unit in this particular case than, than the other. Whoops, I've got the base, didn't mean to do that. So I might have to be a little bit more finicky here in picking parts. Uh, and so I get that one and there's that group and I can move those around. And so now I have created four groups. So once I do that, I didn't change the model at all. I just grouped them differently uh, and I can spend a little bit more time. There's some other pieces I would have liked to have grouped, but I can work with them in that way. I can do a little play with, with them and see how things look in different, different formats and so forth. Uh, I can see them, you know, with a grid plane or not a grid plane, which is what I turned off before. When we, when we were there. All right, but uh, let me see. I want to get back to my actual colors and I want to turn off the wireframe and uh, be done with that from that point. Now, I think that should give me the grouping that I want. And so what I can do is I can now save this. I can do a save as and I can put it in a location and I'll just put it in my downloads folder. No, and I'll put it into my downloads folder here. Uh, and I just lost my program. And that'll work for that one. I'm going to save it and I'm going to give it a new number. I'm sorry. I have my 
iPad. I keep hitting with my elbow and it's turning the screen back on. I apologize for that. All right, so I'm going to save this now into my downloads folder so I can find it quickly. And I want to save it as a uh, GLB format or GLTF, either one will work. And we'll save that and we'll continue. So some information may be lost, but that was that's not uh, that's just telling you what saving process that happens. All right. So now if I go into the platform and if I want to create, I can create a 3D asset. And one of the things that uh, uh, a moment ago, if I want to import an asset here, it'll also uh, allow me to come here. As John had shared with you, I can go back to my downloads folder. I can take that jack plane. I can open it up. And now I can uh, go next. I can credit the author. I'll also do myself this time, even though I probably shouldn't, and give it a category. And we'll start the upload. And now it's preparing that model to put it back into the platform, as you've seen the as as you've seen earlier today, as we worked through the process here. So give that just a second, and then I guess uh, that just gives you the, the main idea, the same building, same thing. So without being totally redundant for for what we've done, I just did want to share with you the ability to change that model. Now, I did leave it in an exploded view, and I probably didn't want to do that when I exported it, so I need to go back into there to do it, but you can see that I was able to update the model somewhat and put it into those different groups. So as a quick snapshot, you can use this tool uh, called um, 3D Builder by Microsoft, and I can show you one other one that, that I'd opened that is a really complex model, and you can see why you may want to do this, but I'm loading this one because it says there's an error in it, and I can click here, and it will automatically fix that error, and I can export it as is in the same process and then pull it over into our platform. So it's a pretty unique way, easy, very intuitive to do. You don't have to do a whole lot in here. It's just a quick, easy way to work with, with your models if, if you want to adjust them by grouping uh, and, and by you know repairing some errors that maybe came from the original author that created it in Sketchfab. All right, so with that, I think we'll come back to you, John, and we'll see if there are questions and talk about some other features and, and tips in the admin panel of the platform in the 9.4 release. Uh, don't hear you, John. You may be muted. There we go. Can you hear me now? I hear you. Okay. All right, perfectly. Thanks, Jamie. So I think that we just saw some really good tools there in terms of bringing content from Sketchfab into our platform. Um, and lastly, I want to touch on the, the usage. As an administrator, access to these Eon XR tools, we're able to access the admin platform, which will give us a lot of great information on usage uh, and tracking learner uh, behavior, what learners do inside the platform, how often do they access the, 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 the tools, uh, in, within your institution. So this is really nice to be able to track these, these trends. If I come in here as an admin, so I'm in the admin portal, uh, and I can see the dashboard view. And here I'm able to uh, toggle between the, the, the year and different months. I can access, so I can go to a specific month and then see usage by, by month. Um, and we can track the, all the licenses that we're using, uh, how much time at, in terms of hours and minutes uh, were used in a particular month. That's this way you can start doing these trend analysis over time. Uh, how is the platform being used? If I scroll down here, we have the, the top 10, the top users, we call them XR champions, who has used the platform the most, who's consumed the most amount of lessons uh, in this section. So this is an excellent way to, to give recognition and track the, these, the learners that are utilizing the platform. Um, I just think there's so many possibilities here as an institution to, uh, to recognize these learners. Um, also have uh, maybe uh, ask these learners to do an interview and how are you using the platform uh, as a way to share with the other learners how, how they're utilizing these experiences into the, in their classroom and what has been the, the learning process, what's their opinion in terms of how effectively in terms of learning uh, this could be. I could track the different logins by week. Uh, and also this is really cool here, the, the top 10 features. So within the lesson, what features are being accessed the most? This is really good data in terms of creating new lessons going forward. You're finding that people are, are utilizing the audio narrations, the embedded videos, um, and maybe they're not using the, the, these other tools as much. I, I can maybe do a video on that. I can show these other tools as well. Also, I can look at by 
categories by attempt. So which categories are being accessed the most? Is it biology? Is it aerospace? Uh, so I can see that as well as a new feature we just launched, the top 10 um, lessons being consumed. So this way you'll see this visibility into the public library that you have and find out which lessons are being utilized by your, your student population, your users in, in your department. So really good stuff, the data that you can is actionable, you can use it, you can uh, use it to create additional lessons. So I just wanna highlight that area and that's within the admin area in dashboard. So from your point of view, Jamie, how do you see the, these, this usage data fitting into the overall program and, and some of its benefits? Well, it, it allows you to see, you know, how, how things are being used and perhaps can identify those things that are really having an impact uh, versus those that are maybe having a mild impact. And so uh, my opinion always about assessment has always been as assessment is a way to uh, determine whether earning is occurring or not occurring. And so you can look at this in this way and make adjustments. So if you see that there are certain ones that are being used, that means that by interest, students are engaged and that they can also, uh, uh, you can also get some feedback as to maybe how you might change or pull some lessons or replace them with others and just kind of make some real time decisions on, on how the platform is being used most effectively within your classes and programs. Okay, great. Well, those are the, the features we wanted to show you from being able to to do an asset to do a scan, uh, merged XR tools, some of the latest updates within a, a lesson. Uh, see, we've got uh, about eight minutes left. Uh, we can take some some questions uh, from the panel, and I do see a lot of questions regarding which which uh, tablet you would need to be able to scan uh, mm -hmm. an object that connects to Scanaverse. So it does need to be a pro. So either the 12 Pro or 13 Pro, uh, so as long as it's a Pro, either phone or tablet, um, that will have LiDAR technology. So that's the key. It needs to have LiDAR technology to be able to, to utilize the scan. So that's a question I saw coming in. I saw, I saw one question uh, come, come about uh, based on the app that I was demoing. And the comment was that Blender could be a better tool even 3ds max or blender either one to to clean up models and that's true if you are you know capable as a 3d modeler the app that i shared was just a quick easy tool for the more novice user to to quickly do some editing and, and working on on the application and sending it back out so that's for, for working with the uh, uh the sketch fab applications again remember the ip requirements that you, know, you don't do a whole lot of, of, of changing around with the, the Sketchfab models. But yeah, Blender and, and 3ds Max are more powerful tools. Offered 3D, the 3D Builder is just a simple, quick, easy way to do some changes as, as a tip. Yeah, and I think the screen dropped uh, when you were presenting there, Jamie, on the on your the, the new feature that you were showing. So some people weren't able to see it, but um, yeah, contact us and then we can send you any, any links that you might've missed or um, weren't able to, to capture what, what Jamie was sharing. Uh, see what else? Uh, there was a question about links to the scanners. Uh, so there was, uh, you, there's a link in the download section on the platform where you can go for Trinio for Android devices and to uh, the Apple Store for the Scanaverse app. So you can get those both either from Play Store or the App Store. Okay, so here's on, on regarding the, the headset. So we are able to connect to several different types of headsets, some of these experiences, uh, the HTC Vive, the Magic Leap, and the Oculus Quest, uh, as well as the, the HoloLens device. So those are the headsets so that you can connect to some of these experiences uh, where you can connect to your, your institution. Um, so currently those are the ones that have been approved by our product team and, and tested. Okay. Sure. So yeah, I do see now that many of you couldn't see <laughs> what I was doing. I have no idea it was it was showing on my screen. So, uh, but the the app is is Microsoft 3D um, uh, 3D Builder. It is a free download. It's it is a very washed out looking program. Again, it's it's a free simple tool. It's not very sophisticated. So that may have been the the issue in in losing that imagery, but. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry about that. I apologize. You weren't able to see, and I didn't see it until later. Yep. Okay. 
I can wrap up with a video here that that the, it could, this video really combines all of these experiences to, into one from all the way to scanning and all the way to what we call spatial meetings, the build, ability to meet each other, um, your colleagues in, in these in these environments. So I'll just include it with a, a video uh, in this in this area showing from scanning and all the way to to getting that scan in inside the platform and to be able to manipulate that. See if this video comes through. There we go. So this is I'm going to a museum and I'm scanning this this engine, uh, just using my tablet. And once I scan that, and bring that into the platform, set my one to one scale. Uh, see, it's so this the dimensions, how big, how close am I to those objects? All that I can adjust. Either if I knew the exact measurements, I can input that measurement or use that sliding bar as you see here to move and adjust. Uh, the right uh, size, width, and height of that object. And this will affect the spatial meetings as well. So I'll show you shortly how that works. And as usual, I'm going to add my knowledge content either uh, on, on, in the platform or in AR mode. I can do the alignment. I can hide the model. And now I'm using the model to work with. And imagine bringing that model back home. I can have it in your living room, put it, this in AR mode, and, and begin this interactive building process going through the annotations. I can use my, my my tablet now. I can type in annotations. I can speak into the microphone and then just browse assortment of content. Um, and that'll be able to add to that lesson and, and build my knowledge portals out uh, over here, seeing videos, even adding a PDF. So here's an example of me touching on that PDF. If you did have a PDF document on your phone or tablet, you can connect to that and then you can upload a PDF document right into that lesson experience, such as that fourth panel that you can work with. And again, the AI search component, I can take a snapshot of what I'm looking at. It'll bring back visual matches of the, that specific object, and which will really refine my search. It'll bring me additional keywords and I can get more precise in, in, in terms of the researching content that I'm looking at. And then as you were showing that workbench, I think you did into the sim similar process, Jamie, you can refining that search in, in different ways and different angles and by using images, image based, um, also word based. I can play the videos back here in AR mode. I can move the, the panels around in different directions. I can have that expanded panel view around my object. So all of those tools with the merged XR feature. Uh, and then what, lastly, we can do, we can have a meeting I can invite people around that object. So on an environment, like I showed you on that, on that poly, uh, on that medical room, it could be an environment, but it also could be an object. So I can bring in an object, scale that one-to-one. -one. Here I'm showing a 3D avatar recording. I can just move around that object, start walking and talking and, 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 and putting back into words what I'm learning. So this is really the, the powerful tool here for, for learners and I can create content put into my own words and having to explain processes and procedures and then connecting with other individuals into a, a spatial meeting. So this is uh, my colleague, Dr. Rena Wolzinger on the right, I'm on the left, and but we're connected around that same object and we're moving around the space and we'll be able to, uh, have, the microphone is open so we can hear each other. We're talking about that object, coming up with new ideas I see. Uh, Dr. Rina's uh, avatar there uh, pop up and then we're able to have that interaction and someone else is able to take the control point uh, different objects there'll be a laser pointer that comes out so uh, really good tools here in terms of scanning bring that in uh, collaborating and then connecting with other students and teachers in these environments any any final thoughts there Jamie on this process no, I think uh, we've 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 covered it hopefully well enough. Uh, yeah, you know, the biggest thing to me is that I, I really see this as an as an awesome teaching and learning tool. Uh, and it's post you know twenty twenty. Uh, I think we we have now we've gone beyond those random acts of progress of using uh, augmented virtual reality to really strategic integrations. And this tool allows us to engage with students in different ways as from the teaching and learning standpoint or trainees where they may be in the workplace 
where we can embed real world content with virtual content much more easily than we've ever been able to do before. Add instruction and learning experiences around that. And then the final point is this, I think putting this in the hands of trainees or students or, or, or any group that you work with and having them go out and do some scanning and build their own lessons is a great reinforcement of learning and it's a great engagement tool that can help them be more successful going forward as they have access to so much more content through this process. So thank you all for, for being with us today and uh, sharing your time with us as we talk about this new release of 9.4 in Eon XR. Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone. And be on the lookout for additional webinars coming out in, in, in the future in the next month. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.